Hello students welcome to online classes of geography of class 8 this is the fourth class of your chapter number 4 natural vegetation now the entire class is divided under four sub topics number 1 grasslands now here i'm going to discuss about the features of tropical grassland and temperate grassland then the shrubs and the scrubs it is related to the hot desert and the cold desert now gradually you are aware about that continuously the forests are depleting so what are the causes of depletion of the forest and how we can conserve i'm going to discuss all these topics all these points under these topics now next it is grasslands grasslands you can see it is there in a tabular form now the tropical grassland the first one it is a type of the vegetation and in africa in venezuela in brazil it is having its local name in africa it is termed as savanna llanos in venezuela and campos in brazil now actually where it is situated we have studied about tropical rain forest or evergreen forest so on the either side of the rain forest these type of the this uh, tropical grasslands prevail and that is in africa in brazilian highlands in northern australia the tropical grasslands prevail now what is the characteristics of this type of vegetation they are having tall coarse grasses now here as it is near by the rain forest so they are getting comparatively high temperature and comparatively high moisture also but it is not so very sufficient to give a dense vegetation like that of the rain forest so here trees are small and they are scattered but the entire area is being covered by the coarse and the tall grasses now grazing and uh, that is uh, it is uh, there for grazing and uh, farming activities but the grazing is not so very uh, it's not so very popular over there why because the grasses are tall and coarse so maximum of the areas are being transformed into a farm lands now next it is temperate grassland now the temperate grasslands are also having the local names in all the continents specifically in all the continents number 1 prairies in north america pampas in south america steppes in eurasia wild in south africa downs in australia now the most important thing about temperate grassland is that these are the areas which are found in the interior of the continents in the mid latitudes and here they do not receive adequate rainfall for the growth of trees so the uh, grasses are short and scattered trees are there and these grassland are very much suitable for the cattle and sheep rearing and some of them and some of these uh, grasslands are used uh, utilized for extensive wheat and corn farming too now what is it these areas are so very important for uh, that is grazing why because one of the most important factor is that it is having a mild temperature and moderate rainfall so both the aspects give very much support to the growth of the grasses that supports the uh, that is the cattle rearing and uh, as uh, cattle rearing is uh, been practiced or if it is not then it is used as a extensive commercial grain farming area now the tree species which are present over there uh, examples are there uh, willow poplar and alder so this is about the two types of the grasslands that prevails in the tropical and the temperate areas now next i'm going to move to the shrubs and the scrubs now the shrubs and the scrubs one prevails in the hot desert another one prevails in the cold desert now the first one desert vegetation that is a hot desert like sahara kalahari namib atacama sonoran great australian arabian indian even <coughs> cold deserts like gobi tibet patagonia these are some of the uh, deserts uh, most important deserts 
prevails in our entire world. Now, what is the specification about there? Uh, that is the vegetation type. <coughs> it is xerophytic vegetation. Now, this what is the meaning of this word xerophytic? Xerophytic is a combination of two Greek words. Xeros means dry and phuton means plant. <coughs> so, it is a dry uh, plant or a dry vegetative area and basically it can adapt to the hot dry climate. So, what type of species of uh, the vegetative cover will have thorny bushes. <coughs> now, the trees which are what we sorry, uh, there will be uh, trees also, but they are like that of palms, date, and the cactus type of trees are there in, in this type of vegetation. And somewhere we are getting the coarse grasses too. Now, this vegetation type is having some more specification like they are having long roots, thick barks, waxy stem, small leaves to reduce the rate of transpiration and in the cold deserts, it is basically shrubs and the coarse gas grasses. Means a tuft of grasses are there in the cold deserts areas. Now, next comes tundra vegetation. Now, this is the entirely a snow-capped areas of southern Greenland, northern parts of Canada, Alaska and Eurasia. And the vegetative cover that grows, it is basically when during the short summer season, when the snow melts out, that supplies the uh, melting of the snows, give appearance to the soil structure and it provides the uh, water to the growing of the vegetation. So, at that time, small flowering plants, mosses and lichens grow over there and altogether it is termed as meadows, M-E-D-O-W-S, meadows. And about the specification of the trees, trees are very less negligible, stunted growth and some uh, species that grow over here, it is willow, birch, alder. So, this is related to your shrubs and the scrubs, desert vegetation and tundra vegetation. You have to note down all these in your copy in this order. Next, I am moving to the next uh, topic that is depletion of the forest. Now, continuously, the forest is depleting on a large scale. Now, what are the causes of depletion of forest? I am explaining it with the help of some pictures. Now, just see the first picture. You can see this is our earth. It is entirely our earth and our earth is totally tired. Why? Because the limited land surface is flooded with the increasing population. It's just, you can see, it is lying here and there. What does this indicate? That we cannot stretch out the land area and continuously due to increase in population, the land under the forest cover is also shrinking out. That means the areas are being transformed to the settlement areas. So, the first point of or the first cause of depletion is rise a rising population or increasing population. Now, the second cause of depletion. Now, you can see in this picture that totally it's littered out with plastics and all the waste products surrounding the forest cover. Now, maybe the, for the recreation pe purpose, people went for the picnic or maybe for some other reasons and they have littered the entire forest. And we all know the plastics are non-biodegradable products. So, what is the resultant? They will create a damage to the roots of the trees and obviously it will spoil the forest cover. So, this is the second cause of depletion. Third cause of depletion, obviously lumbering is one of the important activity. Now, you can see continuously the forests have been deforested, 
for the commercial utilization. So we are using the logs, we are using the timber for various reason and what is the resultant? We are deforesting the land. So third point of cause of depletion of forest is commercial utilization of the forest. Now the fourth point or the fourth cause of depletion is you can see the picture where the trees are just lying. Why? Because due to erosion of the soil. So soil erosion can be natural, can be uh, man-made. So whatever the cause of the soil erosion, but it will create a damage to the forest cover. So this is the fourth cause of depletion of the forest. Next it is, you can see earlier there were three that is the bushes were there, the trees were there, but now the entire area is getting desertif uh, deserted, means it is desertification. So if you see this, we can see, we can say that the areas are making uh, extended deserts. The, due to our deforestation, we are making or we are creating the deserts. So this is the fifth cause that is extension of the deserts. And the last one is the natural disaster. You can see the picture. If you can identify the uh, forest fire or picture of Amazon forest. So this has created a lot of damage to the environment. So this is one of the cause. And another one due to excessive floods, the trees are unable to hold their, uh, or that is the roots are unable to hold it firmly. And as a result, it causes a damage to the forest cover. So these are some of the causes related to the depletion of the forest. So what will be our next step? Our next step is related to the ways of conservation. Now when we are proceeding to the ways of conservation, there should be some principle that why we should conserve it. So what are those principles? The first principle of conservation is to preserve biodiversity. Now hopefully you know what is biodiversity. Bio means life and diversity means variety. So variety of life depends on forest. So if we preserve this biodiversity, then obviously it will be able to uh, preserve the forest. Now next, sustainable use of resource. We are getting huge amount of resources from the forest. But continuously if the forests are depleting at a large scale, so the resources will get exhausted. And our uh, future generation will totally uh, get uh, devoid of all these economic resources or important resources. So for this, we have to conserve the forest. Number three, it is better quality of life. Now we know that forest enhances the environment. So when forest enhances the environment, that means we it enhances the life of living organisms. So if the forests are being conserved, that means we are getting better quality of life. Number four, clean air and water. Now continuously the pollution is increasing on a large scale. So if we are able to conserve the forest that means the forests are able to purify the air and due to forest the precipitation is also the uh, resultant so if the forests are conserved we are getting pure air and we are getting pure water next it is aesthetic pleasure we have studied about the values of resources where economic, one economic value is obviously there that is sustainable use of resource and another one is aesthetic value. So that is also very much important and these are the five basic principles why we should conserve the forest. So next, the last topic is the ways of conservation of the forest. So the first most important one is afforestation. Now, where the land is degraded, where the land is deforested. So, the first way is to plant the trees, that is afforestation. Now, the second is legislation. Now, continuously, 
we are trying to follow the policy of afforestation but there are many who are not following it and continuously for their own benefit they are doing the work of deforestation or for their own uh, that is purpose own motive so laws were formulated or we can formulate the laws so that we can stop deforestation we can prohibit deforestation next continuously we have uh, seen that the population is increasing and when population is increasing in such a alarming rate what will be the result in to get their areas for the settlement to uh, grab the forest areas there is unplanned growth and due to this unplanned growth the forests are reducing so we have to check this unplanned urban growth and that is the one of the way to conserve the forest next it is we are continuously and when the population is increasing what is the second one that is very much important to fulfill the demand of the food and from where we are getting that is from the farming activities so we are unable to stretch out the farmland and resultant we are grabbing out the forested areas so we have to stop the transformation of the forested land into a farmland rather we have to start the practicing of multiple farming or multiple cropping next in the uh, forested areas or in the uh, where the tribal society uh, resides they are continuously they are continuously practicing uh shifting cultivation hopefully you know what is a shifting cultivation slash and burn cultivation shifting cultivation now when tribal society lives in these forested areas they are totally dependent upon this shifting cultivation so it is a work of a government to give some incentive so that they can stop the shifting cultivation and if the shifting cultivation is totally prohibited then the forest can be conserved <coughs> next it is now natural disaster we cannot stop the natural disaster but we can plan it to prevent the loss due to the natural disaster we can make some strategies we can make some uh, signs and symbols that if any sort of floods or any sort of like sort of a forest fire any uh, that is mitigation strategies should be there where we can uh, reduce the that is the loss of the forest and that means a proper planning is needed to prevent the loss due to forest fire or due to floods that means due to the loss of uh, natural disaster due to the cause of natural disaster next it is the last one now we all know that charity begins from home so if we start the uh, conservation level or we start the basic level from the primary level or the root level that means from the school level if the children are engaged to uh, develop or to form eco clubs to organize debates to make poster related to the conservation of the forest to uh, celebrate one mahotsav so that to create awareness in the society and if we started from the school level from the children because they are considered as the future citizens of the country so if they are aware then obviously they will take the step to conserve the forest so these are the ways of conservation of the forest everything should be there in your copy in this order if you are having any doubts in your uh, in these topics just mention it in the comment section and obviously thank you for following the class have a nice day